Friends, welcome to this session on postulational approach in practical classification. Whatever we discuss about the concepts today have been given by father of library science in India, Dr. Shiali Ramamita Ranganathan. You would be wondering what is this term postulational approach? Actually, postulational approach is an approach that makes use of postulates. Now, what is a postulate? Postulate is an assumption. It is a statement that is given which helps us to do the work that we are supposed to do. It helps us in functioning better. It helps us to do things scientifically in a more convenient way. So, Ranganathan has formulated postulates, he has given postulates so that we are able to classify books. He has given a dynamic theory of library classification. He has given a faceted approach towards library classification, which is freely faceted. He has given a freely faceted analytico synthetic scheme of classification. Let me explain what is this freely faceted analytico synthetic. In fact, it is possible due to the postulates that he has given. When we say freely faceted, it means that there are facets that he has given with, with there, where there is no static approach, where, where there is no rigidity, it is all free and it has been possible due to the postulational approach that he has introduced for library classification. So, not only freely faceted postulates, this scheme or this theory of classification that he has given is based on analyzing the subjects of documents and synthesizing the notation for such subjects. Actually, the he thinks he takes it as an ideal approach towards classifying and particularly in view of the nature of this universe of subjects or universe of knowledge. The universe of knowledge is or universe of subjects is always expanding in different directions. You cannot control this universe of subjects, knowledge is keep it keeps growing. So, as classificationists we have to take care of this characteristic of this knowledge. It grows, it grows in different directions, it grows in different volume. So, this growth has to be mapped. Now, we, when we are classifying, there are two sets of people involved in classification, the classificationists and the classifiers. A classificationist designs a scheme of classification, whereas a classifier applies this scheme of classification and classifies documents. So, this postulational approach that has been given by Ranganathan it really guides a classifier and it is such a help to the classifier that he need not to do it in a prefixed way. It is a, a it is something which provides us the logic, which gives us a logical background towards classifying books, towards mapping this universe of knowledge. Now, this universe of knowledge we all know that it is ever growing. Other fact about this universe of knowledge is that is it is multidimensional in nature. When you express the subject of a document in a linear way, 
you cannot assume that the relations are also linear between the different aspects that form the subject of a document. I give you an example, the primary education of girl child in Haryana during the 20th century. I again repeat the subject of the document, it is primary education of the girl child in Haryana during the 19th century. Now, here you I can identify that there are different facets of this subject. One facet is primary education, the other is girl child, the other is Haryana and the fourth one is 19th century. Now, when I when I mention this subject, I have put it in a uni dimension, in a linear dimension, but does that mean that these are related in this particular dimension only, these facets? Is it that the primary education and girl child have the relation and the, this relation is the closest and is less compared to Haryana and the 19th century? because we have placed these facets in this particular order, is it that they are also related as closely as they have been stated? No, it is not so. We could have placed it in another way also, we could have said it is uh, 19th century education in Haryana of girls in studying in primary school. So, it is a way of mentioning and while we classify them, how do we do that? How do we explicitly, explicitly state these relationships among the subjects? You cannot, you have to express it in different ways. As just now I mentioned, I have just mentioned it in two different ways. I could put it in some more ways also, but is it possible in a library classification, particularly a classification for arranging books and shelves? it is not possible. You cannot place a book at four different places, because these are multidimensional does not mean that we can, we can place these this a particular book at four different places or we uh, have four copies of a book and put these copies at four different places. This violates the canon of synonyms and homonyms. Therefore, when we we have to state these multidimensional relations along one direction, the, the nearest neighborhood relationships that exist between these different facets of a multidimensional subject, it has to be in one direction only. It has to be a, a particular direction only, which one is a, a classifier is guided by the postulates that have been given by Ranganathan. And how did he formulate these postulates? As we all know, postulates are statements or facts that have been given, which are assumed to be true or we can say, which are assumed to be convenient to us. In fact, we cannot say that they are wrong or right, but we follow them because they are most convenient to us. Now, let me explain to you, how do we say it is convenient in classification? Basically, what all we are doing, trying to do here is to ultimately arrange our books in shelves, if I use the words of Ranganathan in a apupa pattern. Ranganathan said that the books in a library, books in shelves in a library should display an apupa pattern. What is this apupa pattern? He says it is apupa is an acronym, it says it is alien, penumbral, umbral, penumbral alien. So, what is that? He says, he compares it to the flame of a candle. He says that within the center, it is, it is what he says as the penumbral and umbral region. So, this is the penumbral region, umbral region, penumbral region, umbral region on the sides, it is the alien region. So, if the books, the choice of the, the subject that interests the matter of interest of a particular user, this is on the center, then the on the other sides, on the other two sides, books that are related to this subject should be placed. And how is it possible? He says, this is possible if we classify them by discipline. 
and this is what in his postulational approach Ranganathan has identified as a basic subject. He says that when we classify by discipline, we have to identify the basic subject or the basic facet. So, one is we can we he advocates in fact, every scheme of classification advocates to classify by discipline, because this is how we learn knowledge, but then he has given a terminology for that he says it is the basic subject. And beyond that the different facets that exist he identifies them as isolate facets. So, if we do practically if we classify practically in a library though we have schemes of classification with us and we have different examples of different schemes of classification. It may be a purely enumerative scheme of classification, it may be a partially enumerative scheme of classification, it may be a almost enumerative scheme of classification, it may be a fully faceted scheme of classification, it may be a partially faceted scheme of classification, it may be a almost a, a, a faceted scheme of classification or it may be a freely faceted analytico synthetic scheme of classification as advocated by Ranganathan and also given by him in the form of Poland classification. Now, the beauty of this scheme of classification is that these postulates and principles that were given by Ranganathan when applied we can classify them. We do not need to have a fixed structure, we need not be guided, we not, need not be otherwise given any other guidance other than the postulates that were given by Ranganathan and this is what has been followed while we classify books according to colon classification and this can be applied to other schemes of classification also. And for that Ranganathan has given 8 steps to practical classification. He says that while you classify following the postulates and principles you can do it in it in 8 steps which we can the which is most appropriate to apply for his scheme of classification that is colon classification but can be applied to other schemes of classification though not though not as successfully as possible in colon classification. Let me give you the steps that are there in this. He begins with the first step which he says as step 0. In fact, Ranganathan had this practice of introducing this first as 0, he instead of beginning at 1 he would say 0. So, the step 0 he says as raw title. So, raw title is as you see on the flap of the book or on the title page of the book or as you come to know that this is the title. So, that is the first step according to this postulational approach to practical classification and we say the first step is step 0 and he uh, has titled this step or he mentions this step as raw title. Now, the raw title could be um, it could be a fanciful title like it is Bangan ka Padha, it is a fanciful title. You cannot just tell from this title what is the subject of the book. This could be a, a book on agriculture, growing brinjals, it could be a comedy serial, it could be a drama, it could be a fiction. So, that becomes difficult if you just treat the raw title as the subject. So, you have to read the book and find out what it is, but then raw title is like that only bang and kapodha. So, that the first step you you treat it as the, you mention it as like this only as raw title or if I give you a title which is not fanciful in nature I could be the title could be reference service in public libraries. So, see how contrasting the first title is misleading it is a fanciful title and you have to know more about the document to go further to step 1. So, we are in step 0, I have given you two titles one is Bangan ka Padha and I am trying to guess that this is a book on uh, agriculture, this may be botany, this may be also the a, a, a book on let us say may be uh, business related to that or it could be a drama or a fiction something like that. I may have to go further into it to know further steps of my classification, but the other example that I gave you is reference service in public libraries. It is quite clear about the subject of the book. 
So, raw title remains as such. So, when we are classifying, we should start like this with following the postulates and principles. Now, the second step in this which he says as step 1 and he says it is the title expressing each of the relevant basic and isolate ideas. So, I again repeat that in the step 1 which is called full title here we have to express, express each of the relevant basic and isolate ideas in the subject of the document got by filling up all the ellipses in the raw title. Filling up all the ellipses in the raw title, you, uh, you can very well understand the first title because we are not clear about that. Therefore, in the second title it is quite clear. So, we can say the second title as I mentioned is reference service in public libraries to uh, express it as a full, full title. I have to mention what is the basic facet, what is the discipline. So, I express it as in library science comma reference service in public libraries. Now, it is quite clear. So, the other example that I gave you which is a fanciful title Bangan ka Podha, when I go th flip through the pages, I read it, I find it is a fiction, it is a story in Hindi, it is a short story in Hindi. So, I will say in literature, in literature a short story Bangan ka Podha. So, see now see the difference between the raw title and the full title. So, I have tried to fill in fill in the gaps to see what basically the document is. I have mentioned here the basic facet, I have mentioned here the discipline, I have also mentioned the different facets and the discipline in one case is literature, in the other case it is library science. The facets in one case is uh, it is a Hindi literature, it is short story and maybe I will also mention the author who has done it. And in the other case, the basic facet is library science, it is public libraries, it is reference service. Let us move to the next step. Now, the next step is we have to identify the different aspects that are there and that is called the kernel title. Kernel title means now we have to identify the different facets that are there in it because we have identified the full title. Now, what are the aspects in that subject that is there? What are the different aspects? We all know Ranganathan has said that every subject has a basic facet and that is now like the main class that he has given in colon classification beyond the basic facet, the other facets he has identified as isolate facets as belonging to one of the five fundamental categories that is personality, matter, energy, space and time. And he has also mentioned their orders as personality followed by matter, energy, space and time. Now, in kernel title, it is the full title minus all the auxiliary or apparatus words prepositions, conjunctions, articles these have to be removed, because these are not the terms that really uh, influence the thought content, though they influence, they have a role to play there. But when we talk of putting them as the translation of thought content into an artificial language of digits or notation, we have to forget these auxiliary and uh, conjunctions and other preposition words, because they will not correspond to a particular notation, though they influence the thought content. So, that we have to take care as classificationists, because the same term may be personality or may be space. I give you a simple example, like I say history of India or we I say library science in India. Now, see here India is there in both, when I say history of India, here India is personality but when I say library science in India, here India is space. So, though these terms that are there, these auxiliary terms that are there, I, they help me to identify the facets, but when I express them during classification, 
I have to do away with these auxiliary terms when I talk of the kernel title that is step 2. So, I think this example quite amply, quite amply clears yes why do we remove the conjunctions, prepositions and other such terms, but at the same time take care how do they try to help us identify the different facets of a subject. Now, uh, while uh, thinking of those two examples that uh, full title minus all the auxiliary or apparatus words with each composite term denoting a composite idea replaced by the fundamental constituent terms denoting its fundamental constituent ideas. So, in the case of public library service, be uh, reference service in public libraries, it will be library science, comma reference service, comma public libraries. Whereas, in Bhagan ka Pauda, it will be literature, comma Hindi language, comma short story it fiction, comma short stories and finally, uh, this is the uh, maybe if we mention a particular author also, we can mention the name of the author also. So, this is how the kernel title looks in step 2. Now, moving further step 3 that is called the analyzed title. Now, please be clear that when we talked of the kernel title, we have removed the auxiliary words, the auxiliary terms have been removed, though we have taken care of the relationship between the terms and these relationships are quite indicative by these uh, the conjunctions, prepositions and other articles. Now, we are talking of the analyzed title. What is this analyzed title? Kernel title with each kernel term marked by a symbol. What will be the symbol? It could be either a basic facet or it could be a isolate facet. Within a isolate facet also the term may be if I say P means personality, if I say M means matter, energy is E, space is S and T is time. So, I have to mark every facet by its category and so denoting the fundamental category of which the idea denoted by the term is a manifestation. Not only that, we have also to mention the rounds and levels. Please remember that every occurrence of energy in a particular subject after that begins the second round, next round. If it is an occurrence of energy once in a subject followed by that will be second round. If there is an occurrence of energy second time it begins the third round and so on. Within the occurrence of energy, every occurrence of personality matter is set to belong to different levels. So, within the first energy, if personality occurs twice, it will be two different levels of personality. Matter occurs twice, it will be two different levels of matter. Similarly, second energy, third energy and also please remember the postulates given by Ranganathan that space and time occur only in the last round. They do not have levels, they occur on the in the last round only. So, when we have to mention the analyzed title, we have to keep in mind these postulates of different facets that have been given by Ranganathan. So, in one example it will be library science, we will mention it is basic subject. Then reference service, we will mention this is energy round 1 and I would like to tell you here that when you mention a round, it has to be before the category that means it will be 1 E. So, 1 E means first round energy, but if I say E 1, it shows first level energy and you, you all know that there are no levels of energy it could be levels of personality, it could be levels of matter, but no levels of energy. And the third facet here in this example is public libraries. What is that? Yes, you are very right, it is personality, first level personality. So, now your analyzed title is ready. What is it? Library science, it is the basic subject, comma, reference service it is 1 E, it is first round of energy, 
public libraries it is 1 p first level of personality. Let us think about the second example Bangan ka Padha, it is it is literature, it is basic subject. Hindi language it is P 1, similarly you say short stories it is P 2 and similarly it could be a particular author we can say it is P 3 and you also mention the uh, you mention the author by the date of birth and you mention this particular work it becomes P 4. So, this is how you mention the analyzed title. Going further to step 4, this is called the transformed title. Now, you have you started with the raw title, then you made it further expressive and now you are at the transformed title. Now, what is the transformed title? It is the analytical title with kernel terms rearranged according to symbols of analysis attached to them. That means, now we have to remember the postulates that were given by Ranganathan, the principles that were given by Ranganathan, we have to decide the order of these terms. And what will be the order here? It will be library science, basic subject, comma public libraries 1 p 1 and reference service 1 e. Similarly, in the other example, it will be literature, basic subject, comma, Hindi language P 1, comma, fiction P 2 and comma, that particular author by his date of birth P 3 and finally, the work that is there P 4. We can think of other examples also like that, like if we, I give you another example, like I say cataloging of manuscripts in university libraries. Now, what will be uh, according to the postulates given by Ranganathan, again library science, it is basic subject. Now, you are talking of manuscripts in university libraries. So, it is university libraries, it is P 1, manuscripts is matter for that and cataloging is energy. You, you extend it further, cataloging of manuscripts in university libraries in Delhi. Delhi comes later, it becomes S space and finally, it could also be during the 21st century. So, that will come further ahead and that becomes T time. So, see how simple it is, we are following Ranganathan's postulational approach, we are following all the postulates that he has given to guide us that demonstrates that this is a freely faceted analytical synthetic scheme of classification. Uh, we can justify it very well, we are analyzing, we are analyzing in terms of the postulates and principle, we are putting those facets, we are joining those facets and doing it so freely there is no rigidity here. Moving on to step 5, title in standard terms. Now, we have put them in a particular order, may be the terminology that we are using may not match with the standard terms that have been used in the scheme of classification, but in our particular case it really matches that. I give you an example where it may not match, like I may in the title the term may be such that the term that has been used in the scheme of classification is something else, like uh, if it is let us say. Uh, the term uh, does not match there, like it is home science or home management. If it is home management or uh, it may be home science in the scheme of classification. So, if I am saying home management, when I use title in standard terms, I may have to replace that with home science. So, uh, the terminology should match the terminology used by the scheme of classification, but in our case, all the terms that we have made use of are those terms which have been used in the scheme of classification also. Now, title in facet numbers, now we are to assign the numbers to them 
using the scheme of classification and that is why we put them in standard terms. Had it not been in standard terms, we would not be able to find the notation from the scheme of classification. Therefore, it is important that we replace the terms with standard terms that have been used in the scheme of classification. And now, we can very well assign the notation like in our uh, the example of public uh, reference service in public libraries. We have to open the schedule from colon classification. This is the only thing where, where we are dependent on the scheme of classification. Uh, though we may remember that 2 is the number for library science as a class, we have to uh, see the schedule per go to the personality facet, find out the number for public library and then go to the energy schedule, energy uh, facet and find out the number for uh, reference service. And thus we have done the, we have gone uh, done the step 6 that is title in facet numbers. Similarly, for the other example, we have to go to the schedule of literature and we will find O as the uh, notation for literature, we will find out the uh, number for Hindi language, we will find out the number for the author uh, for the uh, fiction and then for the author according to his date of birth and then also for the work. So, the, now we are in title in facet numbers and now the step 7 that is class number and for class number now we have the notation we just need to know the connecting symbols for them and we all know that the connecting symbol for energy is colon, for personality is comma, for matter is semicolon and for time it is for space it is dot and for time it is apostrophe. So, we join all these as per their connecting symbols and thus we have got a class number for the book that we are classifying. See how less we are dependent on the schedules of classification. It is the postulates and principles that have helped us to arrive at this number. The only point that we wanted to see was we had to go to the particular schedule to find out the notation. Otherwise, we have put it in order. We do not really require to see the facet formula because it is this postulates that have guided us. Now, the last step that is step 8 where we verify. So, this is a reverse procedure the class number that we have achieved, we try to translate this class number into the subject of the document and if the two matches that means, we have achieved, we have done it, yes. So, when we, we translate the number for reference service in public libraries, it should come back as reference service in public libraries and in the other case the Bangan Kapodha, it will translate into a, uh, a short story. Uh, written by so and so, born so and in so and so time, his so such a work and such a work will be identified as Banganka Pada. So, now I think it must be quite clear to you that as a classifier, when we classify documents, we have to follow this approach of Ranganathan given in 9 steps starting from step 0 to step 8 and we follow them step by step using the postulates and principles of classification given by Ranganathan, we will be able to classify them coextensively means we will be able to assign them a notation as specifically as the subject of the document. We should not be misled by uh, fanciful titles, we have to see what that title really talks about, what that book really discusses about and we can very well assign notation to that. That is what is uh, the beauty of this postulational approach of Ranganathan and remember these 8 steps whenever you classify. These are particularly useful for beginners. When we get used to doing it, we need not to do it uh, so explicitly, but whenever we are in a problem, I think this 8 steps would help us to arrive at the right number and helping our users to lay their hands on the information that they require. I think this discussion would help you all and do classification in a better way. Uh, thank you all. Thank you.